to start us off, um, we'll do some introductions uh, about who you're going to hear from. Um, starting with myself, uh, my name is Hannah Reckow. I am a planner with Raleigh's planning and development department um, and leading the, the Southern Station Area planning process. Um, we have a, a consultant team that's helping us with this work, um, and we're going to hear from a few um, folks during this presentation, uh, including um, Chris Hall from SOM, um, Colleen Willig Williger uh, from AECOM, and uh, Karen Kay from SB Friedman. We go to the next slide and get started. Um, so we're we're going to talk a little bit about the project, um, give an overview, some background on bus rapid transit, um, revisit our you know, station area planning themes and really the goals of the project, uh, talk a little bit about uh, affordable housing tools that are available, um, and then take a closer look at two of the, the station areas. So I'm going to hand it off to Chris. We can jump in. And then actually really quick sorry um if you do need Thank the you. spanish um, language interpretation um you can select more at the top of your screen and click language and speech language interpretation and then select spanish um mexico and denise who is here with us from el centro hispano um, will be on the other line um, and you'll be able to hear both the english and the spanish chris please take it away Great, thanks. And also an introduction to uh, Julia, who's here to kind of help us with any uh, uh, technical and organizational issues. So um, thanks for helping us with all of this. Um, so what we wanted to do is maybe um, uh, step back a little bit. Uh, people have seen, uh, many people have seen this uh, parts of this presentation previously in the last round before December, or you maybe you came to an open house. Um, uh, last week or on Saturday and saw some of this information, but we wanted just to share some of the background information to make sure everybody is kind of up to speed and has the, the same level of information. Um, so there'll be an introduction on kind of the background to bus rapid transit, what we're doing as a project, um, and then we'll get into some of the station area plans where we talk about first mile, last mile connections, uh, as well as uh, uh, some development options and alternatives and concepts. Um, and um, as we go into that, also talking about some of the affordable housing considerations. But just as background, you know, this project is part of a, a citywide, region-wide initiative um, touching many communities to improve transit, um, uh, to help accommodate growth in jobs and housing and population that's happening across the region and really to find ways that uh, people can have alternatives to the car. So how can you get around uh, by transit, through bus rapid transit, through biking, through walking as well? So that's really the background. And in this process, we're looking at uh, the Southern Corridor. That's really the focus of this, uh, this part of the initiative. But there's also a parallel study for Western Boulevard and the Western Corridor you may also have heard about. So next. Uh, and just quickly, bus rapid transit, if you don't already know, um, it's a high capacity transit system. It runs in the street. It is a uh, bus based system, but unlike regular buses, in many cases, it will, it will have its own dedicated lane. Uh, it will be a larger uh, vehicle that um, allows more people to get on and off more quickly. It will have high quality dedicated stations, which will be very visible with shelters, with ticketing. All of those things mean that it can move much more quickly through uh, the city and the city's corridors and move people much more quickly to where they need to get to. Next. And, you know, it does many things uh, as well as being a transit system. It connects people to their jobs, to education, to retail, to shopping, to the things that they need to get to to support their daily lives. Um, it also has the advantage of reducing the number of vehicles on the road. So as an alternative to the car, it means that people can travel without driving, which has great uh, uh, potential in terms of improving air quality. It also means people can save money. Uh, they don't need as many vehicles or they may not need a vehicle, personal vehicle at all, um, which can save on uh, car payments, insurance, gasoline, repairs, all of those things um, and parking tickets if you get those. Um, so 
and just on the kind of process we're into now is uh, we're really looking at station area planning. So as transit comes along, um, it can shape uh, change that is coming anyway because of the scale of growth uh, in the region. It's likely many places will see uh, new investments, changes, transitions, and so transit can shape those. And in some cases, it can kind of move the market along as well. So the new infrastructure actually opens up new opportunities. So what we're looking at in terms of station area planning is how do you connect to that transit in terms of walking and biking? What are the land use and open design considerations um, that the city and communities need to consider? How can we support and stabilize existing businesses? How can we ensure uh, housing affordability and uh, work to um, avoid displacement? And how can we engage in an effective way throughout the process? Next. Um, and this is also something that, you know, the city has done previously in uh, other corridors when new transit is coming in, investigating the corridor to understand what the potential effects, impacts and opportunities are. So this is a continuation of um, some similar processes. There are some different characteristics here and different context, but um, you know, again, this is station area planning, continuing a series of station area plans that the city uh, and the region have led. Next. So why are we doing this? Well, why why is the region investing in bus rapid transit? Just some back, quick background on that. Obviously, the population is growing very rapidly, which creates more demand for people to move around on existing streets and uh, using existing systems. But the demand to move, as well as um, you know, the growth in population, uh, really is kind of driving a lot of this change. Next. Um, and this region is growing very quickly. Uh, it's the second fastest growing region in the country after Austin, which is kind of on its own uh, trajectory um, as a standout. But uh, next to that, Raleigh and the Triangle are, are really amongst the fastest growing. Next. Um, this is some analysis from a few years ago that shows uh, in some ways, the shape of the region in terms of human activity. So where are where is population concentrated and where are jobs con concentrated? Uh, and this was in 2017 and you get a composite density. So if you do the squint test, it's sort of like this is where the most activity is happening, uh, where um, uh, where population and jobs are concentrated. If you go next. And this is a projection of where that density would be by 2035. So you can see it's expanding out uh, from the center uh, of Raleigh and expanding out on corridors uh, 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 through Raleigh and into neighboring communities as well. So you go next. And this is a, um, a projection of what the traffic conditions would be in 2035 um, uh, if you don't invest in alternatives. So all of that growth um, also means that people are going to be moving around between job locations, where they live, where healthcare is, where shopping, education are. So this is the potential congestion. So that led to the strategic decision to grow more around transit rather than growing more around driving, uh, which means that you can shape places in different ways and the, the, the nature of neighborhoods, districts, communities, downtowns will be much more oriented around the needs of people walking, biking, riding transit, uh, as opposed to uh, the needs of accommodating cars and having, uh, having everybody in cars. Next. So as we start to look at station areas, uh, there are some kind of high level themes that are on the table. So next. And as a reminder, this is the southern corridor. This is the area that we're looking at today. The map is on its side. That's because it's a it's a long corridor. Um, Downtown is at the north, so that's on the right of your image. If we turn it up the other way, it becomes a small image. So we did 
kind of turning it on its side and elongate it. But the primary route is along South Wilmington, then it veers off South Wilmington um, as it uh, approaches Ghana, as it approaches the Chapin Oak Road, Tryon, and, uh, and then into Ghana. So as a quick reminder, this is the, the orientation. And key themes here, mobility is, you know, a really driving factor. Um, so we're investing in transit, but that also opens up possibilities for improvements to walking, biking, the quality of streets uh, for people, um, crosswalks, intersections, how people can move around. So mobility is a really strong theme. Diversity of development, and that can mean many things. So you can see here there are images of housing, uh, which are different scales. There are different heights. Um, there is also retail activity. There is office activity. So there is that kind of diversity. We're also looking at uh, diversity of um, affordability. So looking at mainstream market rate housing, workforce housing, affordable housing. Those are all things that are part of the mix too. So next. And then active streets and public spaces. We really want to use this as an opportunity to activate the public realm and look at creating smaller plazas, park spaces, gathering spaces, as well as really uh, attractive streets for people to walk on. Next. And equity is a, a key theme here as well. The city invested in um, a guidebook on how to achieve equitable transit oriented development, which is what we're looking at here. Um, and equity is often about housing, uh, but we also think it's about other things. It's about jobs, it's about services, it's about how people can access all of those things and how everybody in the community can have uh, access to a full range of amenities uh, through their daily, weekly, monthly lives. And land, sustainable landscapes are really key for us as well. Uh, we think they're attractive, but it's also really functional in terms of helping us deal with stormwater and some of those issues. But it also supports vegetation, uh, habitat, uh, tree canopy, shading, uh, cooling of uh, micro cooling of um, of neighborhoods and districts and centers. So we're really interested in sustainable landscapes. Next. OK, so I think I'm going to hand off to Karen at this point to talk through some of the equitable development around transit kind of backgrounds and, and topics and also touch on some of the housing market investigations. Thanks, Chris. So Chris started to touch on um, transit oriented development and why equity is important. But um, as a region, uh, Chris described how the region is going to continue to grow. And so we're really expecting population density around uh, these proposed transit lines. And a big piece of this is going to be making sure that there's affordable housing around those transit lines to make sure that um, residents can continue to live and work in these walkable places close to transit, um, both residents today and in the future. Uh, and so the city has shown a commitment to that through developing this equitable transit oriented development guidebook uh, that's led the policy around ETOD or equitable transit oriented development moving forward. If you flip to the next slide. Um, you can see that the city has implemented a transit overlay district along the southern corridor, uh, and that's a big piece of this as a policy puzzle. Uh, the transit uh, overlay district allows for higher density development along this corridor in exchange for the provision of affordable housing. Uh, and so that's one tool in the toolbox of many, which we can speak to in a minute, um, that are, that's intended to make sure that as development moves forward and as we're kind of adding more housing within these areas, um, that there are units that will continue to be affordable uh, over time. Go to the next slide. So when we think about housing affordability, uh, what do we mean by that? Uh, housing affordability is defined by uh, when housing is affordable uh, or when a household is required to spend no less than, no more than 30% of their income on housing costs on a monthly basis. And so that can include rent, a mortgage payment, utilities, um, property insurance, property taxes, and affordable housing can fall into one of two categories. You have legally restricted affordable housing, and that's housing that comes with any sort of um, a mandated rent or income uh, requirement. And it guarantees that a unit is affordable, often in exchange for some sort of government subsidy. 
but there's also naturally occurring affordable housing within a market. And that's housing that has no sort of deed restriction or rent maximum, uh, but that happens to be affordable to uh, lower and moderate income households in a market. Uh, if we look at just some high level stats for the market, we know that 46% of renters within Wake County are considered housing cost burden. So they're currently spending more than 30% of their income on housing. So there is a need to provide more affordable rental housing. Uh, but we also know that 700 uh, units within the Southern Corridor today are currently naturally occurring affordable housing, 800 units are legally restricted affordable housing, and so there is this presence of um, both typologies of affordable housing that we want to protect and also create more of over time. Next slide. So how do you do that? The city already has a number of tools available to them, and we kind of boil them up into five big categories of priorities that we want to organize those strategies under. Um, the category or the types of priorities kind of have come through community conversations, stakeholder interviews. We know that we want to increase affordable home ownership opportunities, uh, preserve existing lower cost housing within these station areas, build new rental affordable housing, uh, better support existing cost burden renters, and then preventing displacement. And as you can see, um, there are a number of strategies that the city already has already implemented. Uh, that really seek to address all of those strategies, but that's not to say that they can't be improved upon, which is part of what our work includes uh, within this uh, study, is to provide recommendations for how those strategies could be improved or expanded upon uh, to better suit the needs within these station areas. So just to give you an idea, if you flip to the next slide of some of the strategies that we're looking at, um, we're looking at things like uh, using impact investment funds to preserve additional uh, affordable housing, those naturally occurring affordable housing units that I mentioned that have no rental restrictions on them right now. Uh, we want to think about how we can preserve affordability in those units long term. So there are models that we see across the country where um, you use impact investment funds to um, bring those units into uh, a portfolio and protect the affordability long term. Uh, from a stakeholder group conversation that we had, um, we talked about kind of a need to assess the equity impact of new housing policies and programs to make sure that they're most aligned with the goals and objectives. And so we've proposed a strategy to address that. And then we've proposed some other strategies along the lines of um, expanding partnerships with mission-driven organizations that own property within these station areas, and then supporting rent-to-own models um, to help people who live in the corridor of her rent in the corridor today um, transition into owner-occupied housing over time. Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, some of the things that are proposed on the ground. Um, and the way we're going to do this is we'll talk you through uh, in segments, looking at the kind of north segment of the corridor first um, from uh, City Farm Road, um, uh, down to Pecan Road. We'll talk about kind of overall ideas for connectivity, then look at some of the station area proposals, and then we'll talk about some development concepts for that area. And at that point, we promise we'll stop talking and we'll um, <laughs> uh, open it up. We have some questions for you, We questions we want you to think about, um, uh, but we'll take you through this section, then we'll stop the conversation, and then we'll move down to Chapin Oak Road and the Tryon area to investigate some concepts for that location, and then we'll have more conversation. So let's go next. So these are the some of the questions we have in mind, and you may have other questions for us, but these are the questions some ways we have for you. Um, so what would make it easier to walk in station areas? Um, so the Southern Corridor, South Wilmington, you know, it's big highways um, in a lot of locations. So what would make it easier to walk? And then what would make it easier to bike? We're interested in hearing your thoughts on what type of housing is needed. Um, and that can be in terms of the form, scale, um, but also about affordability. Any ideas you have for what community facilities are needed as for the existing population and as population grows? And then some key questions around, you know, really the land uses, the building heights, the urban form, which is, you know, the shape of buildings and public spaces. Uh, and then if there are any particular locations you think could have taller buildings. So as we go through this, keep these questions in mind. And in a few minutes, we'll open it up for your uh, your questions. So next. Okay, do you want to go to the next one? So, Colleen. 
Hi, everyone. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this map. So just to remind everyone, it's on the corridors on its side and north is to the right. Um, this map is taking a lot of existing data and compiling it. And what we have is existing plans um, and planned connections shown in essentially solid lines. Um, and then any potential future connections basically shown in dashed lines. There's a few planned bikeways and a few new or potentially planned streets that are dashed, but just bear with me. Um, you'll see some dots that are in green. Those are based on crash data for bicycles and pedestrians. And so anything that you see there, there's a lot. Um, that's where we're seeing potential improvements for pedestrian and bicycle safety. So maybe better crosswalks, maybe better signalization. We're looking at um, potential interventions or considerations for connectivity. Um, you'll see in like the dashed like orange or salmon color too. And that's where we might see some existing like cow paths in the neighborhood that could be formalized with new development um, or new streets going in. Um, and then we're also seeing some folks um, maybe potentially looking at some shared use paths. You'll see that in like a gold hash line. Um, but then also looking at the symbology